All right, in this video, we're going to be talking about analysis of variance, also known as ANOVA. And instead of trying to offer a definition right up front, I'd actually like to start this video with uh, an example. So suppose that you have a long commute to work, relatively long commute to work, like me. It takes me about you know, 45 minutes to get in most mornings. And let's say you also have five potential routes that you could take. You know, and they're all kind of similar. You, you're, you're not sure which of those routes is going to get you to work fastest. So what you do is, for the better part of a year, you drive these routes and you collect data. In fact, you decide, I'm going to be really scientific about this. I'm going to drive each of these routes 60 times. So six days a week for 10 weeks, I'm going to drive route one. And for 60 days, six days a week, 10 weeks, I'm going to do route two, route three, four, five, and get a mean and standard deviation for the time it takes me to get in when I'm driving each of those routes. You may think this is an unrealistic example uh, and that no one would be that scientific about their, uh, their route to work, and maybe so, but this is my video. And I want to point out that I did not actually do this myself. Uh, it's, that's crazy. But what you'll end up with is a lot of data. And you know, what can you do with that? Well, you could look at just the, the average time to work for each of those routes and pick the one that has the, the, the lowest average time to work and say, that's my route. I'm just going to run that from now on. Okay, look, that would work. That, that, that's a heck of a lot better than nothing. You've got, you know, 60 data points for every route. That's pretty good. Uh, but you want to you, you be scientific. You want to be absolutely sure that this is the best route for you. And, you know, there's obviously going to be some uh, variation in, in each of these routes. So it could just be sort of, you know, uh, maybe there was construction on one of those routes and so there, was, there was some weird results or, or who knows. But you want, so you want to be, you want to take all that into account. And you want to be sure that the differences, the difference between these routes is significant. Well, okay. If you want to be, if you want to get significance, you could run individual t-tests, right? I mean, you could, uh, you could do a t-test and compare every single one of those, essentially uh, a, a simple regression, comparing every single one of those routes with every other route. But that leads to some problems of its own, right? I mean, you've got five routes here, and let's say you want to be 95% sure there's a difference if you compare any two routes, right? You've got five routes. That means you would have to compare the first route versus all the other four, so that's four comparisons, and then the second route versus the routes three, four, and five, so that's three more comparisons than two. You'd have ten total comparisons, trust me, uh, it's if you were going to compare every route with every other route. And if you're dealing with 95% confidence, well that means every time you make one of those comparisons, there's a 5% chance of type 1 error, meaning you rejected the null hypothesis, you said, yeah, there's a, there's a significant difference, when actually there wasn't. Um, you shouldn't have rejected the null hypothesis. That's, that's you know, anytime you're doing t-tests, regressions, things like that, there's always a chance of type 1 error, depending on how, you know, what you set your alpha to, and depending on how confident you want to be. And it, the more tests you run, the higher probability of actually having one of those type 1 errors. So, let's actually do this as an exercise. This is a little bit of a tangent, but, eh, it's a good review. If, we, if we're doing 10 t-tests, every single one of them has a, and we've got a 95% confidence, i.e. every single one of them has a 5% you know, chance of error, a type 1 error, where we, we said it was significant and it wasn't, that's a binomial question, right? That's, that's got an n of 10, an x of 0, meaning we want to know, you know what, if we said what's the probability that we don't have any type 1 errors? Right? We, you know, essentially that, that all of our, you know, whenever we say there's significance, we're right. If, if we did 10 tests and, and, and said there were differences between them, that means there's 10 opportunities for type 1 error. What's the probability, if we're seeing a lot of significance, what's the probability of, of actually having that be, um, you know, having a type 1 error or more than one type 1 error? Well, probability of getting zero type 1 errors with an n of 10 and an x of 0. I'm at the binomial table. I've got my p of 0.05. I'm looking for an n of 10. There it is. And an x of 0, well, okay, you know, chance of, of, of having no er type 1 errors if, if, if within 10 opportunities for them is, uh, is about 0.6. So, okay. 
you know, it's not bad, but that means that there's a 40% chance, because complement of 0.6 would be 0.4, there's a 40% chance of having at least one type 1 error. So, you know, you're running a risk, a big risk, actually. So, instead of running a bunch of, and, and you can see how this would, uh, the, the chances of, of having type 1 errors gets much, much, much bigger the, the higher, you, the, the number of groups you're comparing. So if you're comparing 50 groups instead of 5, you're running a big risk of, of you know, having false significance, having type 1 errors. So we have, we have a way to get around that. And that's ANOVA, the whole point of this video. Um, what ANOVA is, is it is a sort of a catch-all test for differences across groups. When you run ANOVA, what it tells you is, is, it, is it checks to see are there any differences across any of these groups? And if there are, it'll essentially be, you'll return a significant, meaning, uh, you know, it'll test and say, yes, there are differences. It won't tell you which groups are, are different, but it'll say, yes, there are differences across these groups. Essentially what it is, is it's a hypothesis test. In this case, I, I'm showing with, uh, with, with five groups. Um, this would be the equivalent, if you had 10 groups, I just have 10 different means that it's comparing. The null hypothesis says there is no significant difference across all of these groups, meaning essentially uh, mean one, we don't have enough evidence to say that mean one is not different from mean two, mean three, so across all five, five groups in this case. The alternative hypothesis is that there is at least one, could be more than one, but at least one significant difference across the means of these groups. I used uh, the mean of I and the mean of J just as sort of stand-ins, but it's saying uh, among these five groups, there's at least one difference across two of the groups. And what do we do with this? Let's say we get significance. What if, what if ANOVA says, yes, significant. We're going to reject the null hypothesis. There is at least one difference across means of groups. Well, it doesn't tell us which groups, but then we can sort of look at the data and say, I'm going to start, and then you can selectively run t-tests. And maybe you're not going to run t-tests across comparing all the groups, but you'll say, well, what about my highest and my lowest? You know, that I, I could run, or even say, you know, if that turns out to be significant, significant maybe I could run a, a, a test between my lowest, and remember we're talking, you know, time to work, so the, the fastest route on average versus the second fastest and decide whether there's significance there. Those are the things you might want to want to do with this if you came up with a significant result on ANOVA. All right, enough talk about ANOVA. Let's actually do ANOVA and I'll show you what, you know, hopefully this will sort of cement what we're talking about here. So here I have the data that I made up. These are all the times that I've recorded for each of these routes that I was imaginary running. Um, we've got 60 data points for each of these routes, right? Because we did a, yeah, here's 60 data points for each route. And I can just run ANOVA right off of this. I've, I've got, a, it'll actually, I don't even need to look at my averages first. ANOVA will do that for me. So I go to data, data analysis. I'm going to choose ANOVA single factor. We're only, we, I only care right, right now I haven't gotten there yet. All I care about is the routes. Which route gives me the fastest times? So that's the only factor is the route th that I'm using. So I click OK. My input range is all of this. And I click labels in the first row because there are labels in the first row. OK. And it gives me this output, which I need to format a little bit. I'm not going to get into all the, the things that it gives me here, but some of the, the significant stuff. Okay, it tells me each route has 60 measurements. I already knew that. And they have an average for each of these, an average time to work for each of these routes. They're pretty close. You know, there's not, not much difference there. But let's see if there's significance. I can go straight down to where it's under here it says ANOVA, source of variation between groups and look at my p-value. Whatever threshold I said, I didn't actually, I should have done that before we even started. I should have said, I care about, I, I want 95% confidence that there is a difference between groups. Well, I didn't do that, but let's say I had said that. I'd look at this and I'd say, is my p-value less than 0.05? It is. In fact, it's less than 0.01. So I, even if I had said I want to be 99% confidence there's a difference between two of these groups, 
I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be able to run with this. So that has told me there seems to be a difference between two of these groups. Then, now that I've got that, I could start thinking about where the difference is. It might be between my fastest route according to my averages. You know, it might be that, that route two you know, is significantly faster than all the other routes. But actually looking at this thing, that might be true. You know, there might be differences across all five of these groups. They might all be different from each other. I don't know yet. Um, I actually suspect it's probably Route 4 that is significantly slower than all the others. There seems to be the biggest gap between Route 4 and, and any of the others. E even you know, more, more of a difference between the, 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 the fastest route and the fourth fastest route. Seems to be that there's, there's a difference between Route 4 and all the others. So that's where I probably would be where, where, what my guess would be. Now I want to talk about two-way ANOVA, also known as two-factor ANOVA. You can actually run an ANOVA with more than one factor included. And what it will give to you is, is, is a couple, uh, not just two, th two things, it'll give you three things. It'll tell you, is there a significant, so let's say, okay, before I even get into this, let, let, me, let me give you the example. Let's say I, what I care about is, uh, I, I'm actually suspicious that there's a difference um, in the day of the week. You know, how, how fast I'm getting to work according to the day of the week. And obviously I care about which route is fastest, but I also care, I, I want to know sort of uh, whether there's a difference between um, my time to work on a Monday versus a Saturday. I have strong suspicions, uh, but there's a third thing I care about, and that is, are there certain days, I'm sorry, are there certain routes that are faster on certain days? Meaning, does the day actually affect, do the, does the day have an effect on the predictive power of route upon the dependent variable, which is time to work. This is called an interaction term, and it means there is, is there does one variable have an effect on the predictive power of the other variable? So let's uh, talk about one more example to sort of illustrate this point about interaction effects. Let's say you are operating a department store and you're tracking data about your customers, and you decide to roll out several different customer service interventions and, and, and you want to know their effect upon sales. Uh, in other words, how much a customer is willing to spend. So you're, 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 running, you're operating these, these several different customer service interventions. You're tracking sales data by which customer service intervention each customer is exposed to and by gender. And so you want to know, does there seem to be a, a significant difference uh, across men and women in terms of their spending habits? Is there a significant difference um, uh, among customers in terms of their spending habits according to which customer service intervention they received? And are some of those customer service interventions, uh, do they have an effect that is different on men and women in terms of their predictive power uh, in, in terms of the customer's uh, buying? There's, there's the sales that you generate from that customer. Uh, and this is very much a two-way street. In other words, you're sort of looking at do different Customer service interventions have um, different effects upon gender. Do some do do women respond differently to some of these um, the, the, these customer service interventions as opposed to others uh, with regards to you know then making a purchase, and also sort of does being a woman or do, does being a man um, have a, a, a different effect upon the customer service intervention and how much that affects uh, the customer's purchasing. So it's it is a very much it's, it's a two way street, but you can see that this, there's, you get from two-way ANOVA three things. You get the difference between the first factor, groups, you know, in this case, gender. Differences across the second uh, factor, which would be um, when you group the customers according to which customer service intervention they were exposed to. And then is there inter inter interaction, meaning do some of these different customer service interventions have varying effects up upon gender and that gender's predictive power on sales and vice versa. Okay, let's look at a two-way ANOVA here. Uh, this, is, this is back to our data with uh, these 60 different routes, I'm sorry, the five different routes and the, the 60 different uh, measurements of time to work. Now I've broken this out into the routes and the day of the week, Monday through Saturday. It was a hardworking individual. But we still got 60 data points for each. I said, you know, 10 weeks, uh, we, we ran each route 10 week for 10 weeks on six days per week. And so we've still got 60 data points. In fact, these are the same data points. Um, and essentially, each row is a week here. 
Now I can go ahead and run two-way ANOVA here to give me differences across routes, days, and interaction. Now I have two options. In data analysis in Excel, I have two options. I have ANOVA two-factor with replication and without replication. With replication means you have more than one in a data point that combines the two factors. And in this case, I do. I have 10. I have 10 weeks for every route. So, uh, you know, 10 instances of a route being run and each day of the week. So I'm going to say with replication, my input range is the following. It's all of it. And it asks me for the rows per sample. This means the number of, in this case, the number of weeks. So, I, you know, I've got route, each of these routes is, has 10 rows dedicated to it. So I say 10, click OK, and uh, let's take a look at what we've got. Okay, so first it gives me, it breaks down each of the routes, which is something we already had. You know, it gives me the average route Route 4 is the slowest still. This is, you know, this is the same data. We've just separated it out by weeks. And so this is kind of a, a, the same thing as that we had before. Except now each of the routes is also broken out according to day of the week. Let me move this over. So it tells me the average time for that route on each day of the week. That's kind of nice. And down here, before I get to the ANOVA, it also gives me, so this is sort of a, a, a sum, a summary of each of the days of the week. So we have 50 data points for each day of the week. And so this, sorry, this information here is the average time to work on each of those days of the week. So this total area right here, this gives me the average time to work on a Monday. I think we started on Monday, yeah. Average time to work on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday seems to be the longest on Thursday, drops off a bit on Friday, and then Saturday is way faster because not as much traffic on Saturday. Not everyone is as hard working. And then down here for the ANOVA, now we're just looking at significance, right? We want to know, is, does there seem to be a difference across days of the week? Sorry, across routes, across days of the week, and across, and, and is there significance in terms of the interaction term? So. Here, it doesn't actually make it all that easy on us. Sample, in this case, is, is the route. It's you know, broken out by rows. We, it's, it seems to be very significant. The columns, if you'll recall, were our days of the week. And that's even more significant. It's got an incredibly small p-value. So, you know, and we would have expected that. You know, we're using 60 observations, I'm sorry, 50 observations for each day of the week. And Saturday is a lot faster. Uh, so it, there certainly seems to be at least one significant difference across days of the week. I would guess that, you know, probably Thursdays it has a significant difference from all the other days as well. Maybe there might even be differences like between Tuesday and, and a, oh, wait a second, this is Friday, sorry. Tuesday and a Wednesday, Friday's probably different from all the other days. Saturday's probably different from all the days. We could do t-tests to confirm that. And then looking at the p-value for interaction. Does there seem to be a significant interaction here? No, our p-value is too big. It does not pass, uh, it, it's not smaller than our alpha of 0.05, because I said 95% confidence. So um, there does not seem to be a significant interaction term, or at least we can't reject the null hypothesis there. And what does that mean? It means that you know we don't have enough evidence to say that some routes are faster on certain days. Basically, there some the routes seem to have differences between them. The days seem to have differences between them, but there doesn't seem to be an interaction. There doesn't seem to be any evidence, that, enough evidence to suggest that some routes run faster on, uh, a, you know, run fastest on a Saturday, and some routes run slower on a Monday. They basically all seem to have a similar effect according to the day of the week.